I am working on a piston to replace the bellow on the engine. The bellow worked fine, but I would like to see how a piston performs in the same configuration. This new design will be a very easy piston to build. Basically it will be two nested tubes with end caps attached with a little epoxy. Also, I'll need to redesign the air channel because the piston will need more space. Okay, kind of taped it off. It's kind of a guide to make sure I don't go too far up the piston with it. This is the outer piece, so it doesn't matter that terribly much. And I uh, scored the edge with some sandpaper. Make sure I get the bind good. Just gonna go around the outside and just kind of put the epoxy on doesn't need to be as, you know, the higher temperature epoxy because it's going to be separate from the engine with the, the air channel, it won't get as hot. This will be the interior piston, or portion of the piston. Uh, it's going to be assembled pretty much the same way as the uh, exterior. First we're going to score the edges. Get a little sandpaper and rough them up a little bit. Taped it off because so I don't mess up the rest of the tube where it's going to be sliding and in contact with the uh, exterior portion. Because it's the interior, we can score the inside a little bit and put a little epoxy on that side too. To flow down onto the uh, wood piece. In this case, there's going to be a hole in the bottom. That's where it's going to attach to the air channel to feed the air in. This should prove to be the easiest piston of any of my designs to make. Because the piston is going to require more space between the crankshaft than the bellow did, I need to make a new air channel. This air channel is going to be a little different uh, build. Um, basically, cut a piece of wood this shape into three layers. Then from the interior, I'll cut out that and then put, put it back together with some glue and cut out the final shape. Because it's going to be a kind of a thicker cut, I'm going to use a softer wood than oak is what I've been using. This, this is just a piece of cedar I had laying around. I've cut out the basic shape. I've left a little on because as I'm going to cut out this side, I'm going to make my... Actually, it's going to be three cuts for my overall profile and then the two for the two thin pieces and then cut that off at the end to separate them all. That'll help hold things together. All right, taking them and I've cut it the length. You certainly could just go down to a hobby store and get a few thin pieces of wood that add up to about a quarter inch and uh, just make this by layering already cut wood together. You may notice my plans change from what I have on the blocks of wood. It's because I'm constantly refining the plan. I make it up as I go, so but this will be my interior pattern. That'll allow for the openings, these parts that extend out. The holes are really, I mean here it's where it attaches to the engine, but these other ones are just to help line up the patterns and stuff. So here they are cut into their three pieces. Now I'll just uh, do the interior pattern on the middle thicker piece. Okay, this is the interior pattern attached. Uh, Cut out wood here. I'm going to line them all up, glue them all together, and cut out the final profile. Obviously, I'll take this tape off here. Glued the layers up. Used a couple drill bits. I could have used a sixteenth of an inch tube as well to line it up with the holes. And I pull those out before they the glue dries on them, so I can clean them up. Once the air channel's done, you should end up with something that looks a little like this. I'm probably going to spray paint it. I got some engine block paint, so I thought I'd give that a try. Um, before I do that, though, the interior portion of the new piston drive is going to be glued right onto the uh, support. Basically, line up the two holes and just glue her on. Being a careful, careful, of course, not to get glue in the hole so it doesn't plug itself. I'll just glue that up, 
tape off the piston and spray paint it. The new piston drive is going to require a new connecting rod. So we've got the plans for that here. This will be a uh, cut out on the scroll saw. I'm going to skip the part that would allow me to uh, remove it from the crankshaft. I'm just going to drill it out to allow for a bearing in there. Uh, initially I'll cut this side to about here. Then I will cut out the piece that attaches to the back of here. Then cut the sides up until the up until this point. Then finish cutting out this side. First I'll cut out the back, then I'll cut out the front, so then we'll remove the whole thing. resulting pieces will be like this so this small piece here is to attach simply be glued onto the back of this guy try to center it, doesn't have to be perfect but close is always nice just need to oop, freshen the hole a little bit after cutting it out At this point, I have the air channel attached to the engine, the new one. And I'm going to just do a quick test for uh, how well things slide. So, that's pretty good. Obviously, there's some air loss, which you you want some otherwise. Uh, but that is probably the easiest moving, and best return on the air pressure I've seen in one of my engines. The beauty of designing the piston this way is uh, on the other engines when it would run for sometimes the uh, piston gets a little messed up a little dirty and then the piston cylinder this way it'll be a lot easier to clean the piston cylinder because the cylinder piece or the outer piece actually comes off and this you would just be able to go on with a little steel wall and clean up very nice here it is running with the new piston design new air channel um, it actually didn't perform quite as well as the bellow did, to my surprise. Um, in an effort to increase its uh, operational range to a lower temperature, I've increased the travel of the displacer, and the um, to give it a little more torque, I increased the throw of the uh, piston arm of the crankshaft as well. Um, hasn't helped a lot. Let's turn it up a bit here. It performs all right at higher temperatures. I also increased the uh, diameter of the displacer. Um, unfortunately, sometimes it actually sucks over and uh, blocks the exit hole of the air. So if you get too much of a temperature differential, it's blocking it right now, so that's not good either. I believe I can extend the range, operational range of the engine by making a solid airtight displacer. I'm going to do that out of balsa wood, still lightweight counterweights will still have to be slightly bigger but uh, that should improve the engine by having less air volume within the chamber to absorb the pressure or vacuum when trying to drive the piston all right this is the balsa I'm gonna make the new displacer out of I'm still gonna use the actual displacer plan from the displacer plan generator and then basically 
make three discs that will be inside the interior of the displacer. Um, one on each end and one in the middle. And I'll still wrap the cylinder with uh, the displacers with the uh, cotton paper. And that should give us enough solid structure and support for holding the inside in place and all together to displace all the air. I was working on the displacer made out of balsa in an effort to make it so it displaced the entire volume of air inside of the uh, displacer. However, it occurred to me while I was making this, if I could just fill this with something that was lightweight that displaced the majority of the air, I could achieve the same thing without having uh, the balsa displacer. And in the absence of uh, being able to make some aerogels, I decided popcorn. So, ripped the popcorn into some smaller pieces so it would uh, mesh together inside, fill it relatively densely. It shouldn't have much weight. I think this might work. Went back to the bellow. With the modifications I made trying to get the piston to work, larger displacer, this is actually the one filled with popcorn. As ridiculous as that might sound, it seems to be working fine. Um, you know, larger stroke with the, uh, the drive shaft and the little further travel with the uh, displacer up and down. Uh, one thing I did find was the uh, tube used to uh, for the displacer shaft was not straight up and down, and that was causing a lot of friction. And uh, with those changes. And going back to the bellow, I now have it reliably running under 200 degrees. If I don't bump it, of course. Starting temperature somewhere around 170, so that's a lot better than uh, 224. Let's try that again. 176 right now. Um, filling the displacer with popcorn didn't throw the balance quite off a bit, so I just uh, put a magnet. Just kind of found a spot that worked about right and balanced it that way. Still having a bit of an issue uh, with the uh, displacer sucking over to the um, entry hole, exit and entry hole inside the engine. To correct the problem of the uh, displacer suctioning to the side with each um, compression cycle or heat up cycle, I've made another hole in the other side and I've made a kind of a wood piece just like this one and drilled a hole in this one. I'm going to fasten this one to the side here just like I did on the first side except there's no hole all the way through. Then I'll make a connection between the two. Okay, the finished air channel will simply be glued on to here. So I'll probably use the uh, the silicone is to attach that on like that. Gives space for the spring to go up to the, uh, the eyelet. Right. This is the engine with the air bypass on. It basically allows me to compensate for the fact that the displacer was suctioning to the side of the engine. But uh, by putting a second air port on the other side and making a channel between the two was greatly eliminated any issues with that allowing it to run much faster so it's no longer choking itself off it's still the uh, this place filled with popcorn but hey it's working pretty good <laughs>